It's been a while since I've made an extra Samurai History video, so I thought I would come back and touch on another topic I haven't really highlighted too much of yet, that being Samurai Armor. In this video, we are going to take a dive into the evolution of Japanese armor, while also taking a look at each component while discussing its purpose. And at the end, because it also coincides with armor, I will try to answer the age-old question of why don't we ever see samurai using shields. So, let's get started. The earliest examples of armor in Japan obviously come from the mainland, as we can see many similarities between Japanese armor and armor from China and Korea. The first real example of metal armor we can see originated in the 4th century. It is called Tanko. Tanko was made up of iron plating, tied together by leather cords. This method of armor tied together is known around the world as lamellar, and although it had its advantages, it was also somewhat bulky. A century later, and we can begin to see that the Japanese had shifted away from the Tanko, and instead had adopted a more suitable armor for mounted combat, this armor being called Keiko. Keiko was adopted mainly from Korea, and was also considered to be lamellar although it differed from the tanko in regards to its composition. Instead of larger metal plating, the keiko consisted of smaller, more narrow pieces of metal woven together. This made it more flexible. We can see these mainland forms of armor being used from the Kufun to the Nara period, before the Bushi came into the spotlight. It is of course when we get to the Heian period, where we truly start to see the differentiation between Japanese and other Asian armors. This coincides with the rise of the Bushi warrior class. The Keiko saw its heyday up until around the 8th century, yet when the Bushi became the staple military model, things began to change. The Bushi were for the most part mounted archers, and although the Keiko provided excellent flexibility, it did not work so well for using the bow on horseback. This is where we begin to see the development of the Oyoroi, the Great Armor. This is the first time we can look at armor in Japan and immediately recognize it as samurai armor. The oyaroi was very box-like and hung from the shoulders. It was made up of many different components. Although the best oyaroi was made of metal, some were fashioned out of leather and were tied in the back by a silk cord. The important part was that the actual armor strips, metal or leather, were lacquered to essentially form plates. Its design allowed the wearer excellent flexibility, specifically for archers on horseback, through its somewhat exposed armpits. Yet, its large frame also provided great protection from incoming attacks. Of course, its bulkiness meant it wasn't the best suited for melee combat, but obviously this was simply because it was not designed for that purpose. Simplified versions of the Oyoroi were eventually developed for foot soldiers. We can initially see this in the form of the Tomaru. The Domaru was in a sense an armored jacket, which provided far more flexibility so that foot soldiers could effectively engage in melee ground combat. The Oyaroi and Domaru were on full display during the climactic Ginpei War, which saw Japan fall under the rule of the samurai, and later during the Mongol invasions of Japan. And it's after the Mongol invasions where things start to take another major turn where previously warfare in Japan had somewhat fallen into a static rut. When a force from the outside world had invaded, the samurai quickly saw how their methods had become outdated. Changes needed to be made, not only to better defend against outside threats, but also to update warfare on the home islands. Most noticeably, foot soldiers became vastly more relevant, giving rise to the Ashigaru, conscripted peasant foot soldiers who often doubled as farmers. Initially, they would be outfitted in the Do Maru, yet in time we can also see the introduction of two new designs, the Haramaki and the Harate. The Haramaki and Harate stepped away from the thin armor strips present in lamellar armor to instead use larger, longer strips of metal which overlapped. This form of armor is known around the world as laminar armor. These new armors held their weight at both the waist and shoulders, making them feel lighter than their predecessor. Couple that with the excellent protection they provided to the chest and abdomen, along with the fact that it was far easier to produce, and you have a far superior alternative that quickly became the staple armor for all foot soldiers. Another major change in samurai warfare caused by the Mongol invasions came in the form of mounted combat, where of course previously the samurai had been mostly mounted archers, 
the efficiency of mounted samurai as shock cavalry became more apparent. Thus, in a need to create armor that better suited the needs of mounted melee combat, samurai began switching their chest pieces from that of the oyaroi to the domaru, which worked to create a hybrid flexible suit. In later years, instead of the domaru, samurai would begin using the haramaki and harate as chest pieces. Additionally, alongside the development of new armor variations, we can also see the introduction of chainmail, called kusari. Initially just meant to fill gaps in armor, kusari would be stitched into clothing to help protect vulnerable areas. In later years, particularly in the 1800s, we can also see full suits of just kusari. This was also the period in which we begin to see the introduction of many other added improvements, some of the most noteworthy being improved helms, face masks, and improved shoulder pieces. By the 1400s, the new forms of hybrid armor had culminated into what was now known as Tose Gusoku, or Modern Armor. It would be the primary armor used during the Onin War, which kickstarted Japan's Warring States period, the Sengoku Jidai. And it's during the Sengoku Jidai where we can truly get a comprehensive look at samurai armor during its prime. So, let's briefly take a step away so that we can go over the many components of typical Sengoku Samurai armor. The core of any suit of armor is of course going to be the chest piece, which is called Do. It is the one piece that has underwent the most changes throughout the history of the Samurai. The Kabuto is the helmet. It too has many different styles and variations, offering protection for the skull and neck. Additionally, it's where the famous samurai ornamentation sits, signifying status, fame, or personality. Some famous examples of ornamentation can be seen in the crescent used by Date Masamune, the antlers used by Honda Tadakatsu, and the sunburst used by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. The hoate is the face mask. It usually contains a removable nose piece and generally contains whiskers or a fearsome demon-like appearance. The sode are shoulder plates, fastened by hooks and usually worn by officers. The kote are the sleeves, important pieces of protection for the arms and usually covered in chainmail or other protective materials. The yaguke are the gloves, usually fashioned from tanned leather. The ua obi are the belt and sash, the important pieces for holding swords. The haidate are thigh guards, taking an almost apron-like appearance, containing pieces of woven metal or leather for protection. And the suneyate are the shin guards, made of vertical plates with leather included on the inner side where the guard comes in contact to a stirrup, if on horseback. There is also a formulaic method to equipping samurai armor, as one must do it correctly to be properly protected. First, the proper underrobing must be donned. Then, working feet up, the armor is applied until one reaches the head and the helm is strapped on. One last note regarding the color of armor. Contrary to what video games and films would have you believe, samurai armor was not all one single set of colors for one clan. In fact, color more depended on one's family or even persona. A fine example of this was E. Naomasa, who tended to wear red armor. This was in conjunction to his elite group of samurai, who went by the name the Red Devils. They all wore red while fighting under Tokugawa Ieyasu, whose own family colors were not red, but were usually seen to be brown prior to him becoming Shogun. But getting back to history, during the first half of this age of war, the Tosai Gusoku underwent little change. However, another major alteration was to occur after the introduction of Western firearms into Japan in 1543. Needing to strengthen armor to be resilient to musket fire, new armor constructed from heavier iron and steel plating began to emerge. This new armor was to be known as Tameishi Gusoku, which can be roughly translated to bullet tested. In addition, blacksmiths also began to take designs of armor in the west, changing the design of chest pieces yet again. New chest pieces would shift away from being combined plates to instead becoming one strong single plate. The Japanese also took western designs for helmets and began shaping them into Japanese styles as well. This armor would be known as Nanban Gusoku, 
and was by far the most advanced armor Japan would see during the Sengoku Jidai. Once the Sengoku Jidai came to a close and Japan was reunified, the evolution and development of armor faded out. Instead, new designs focused on adapted protection, armor worn under or in conjunction with usual samurai garb. Samurai armor wouldn't see heavy usage again until the Boshin War and the Satsuma Rebellion in the late 1800s, which brought the samurai era to a close. But although we have finished the evolution of armor in Japan, I do want to touch on one final thing before I wrap things up. That being what I stated in the beginning, why didn't samurai use shields? A question you may be wondering after going over all this armor information. And there is an answer, although it is a little complicated. Now, the most common thing I hear is that samurai thought shields were dishonorable, which, although probably some samurai believed that, that wasn't the case everywhere. Shields actually were used in Japan, in fact, quite a bit. Japanese warriors had used shields long before the samurai even came into being. Yet, when the samurai took over, things took a bit of a turn. The early samurai were mounted archers, which meant shields really couldn't be used on horseback. The closest thing we get is the shoulder armor of the Oyoroi, which in some cases could provide shield-like protection thanks to its large square shape. However, we primarily see shields used for protecting foot soldiers as almost stationary defensive barriers. These were called tate. For instance, erecting them in a line provided cover for archers. In some cases, they also had handles on the inside so that soldiers could move them when advancing. These were called tedate. However, as time went on, most weaponry in Japan generally required two hands, so tedate never fully evolved beyond the point of stationary devices. They truly fell out of favor when matchlock firearms began to take over, as musket balls easily blew through the wooden shields. This would prompt the construction of larger defensive structures, which would better absorb musket volleys. There were some metal tedate and chainmail tedate created, yet the Sengoku Jidai ended before shield technology took any major leaps. We can see that during the Edo period, craftsmen did play around with the idea of furthering the design of tedate as hand shields, but nothing massive would come of it. So, while yes, shields can be seen used in feudal Japan, they never took the large role shields did in the West. So, there you have history on the evolution of samurai armor and information on shield use in feudal Japan. I know there is so much more I didn't get into, and so much more in depth I could go on the different variations of certain armor types, but I simply wanted this video to be a nice overview of Japanese armor. So, with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.